Yo, what's up, guys? This is the chart for the British pound Japanese yen, uh, otherwise known as GJ. So, um, I'm sure you guys hopefully know how this goes by now. We look at the fundamental picture and then go into the technicals. That's how I like setting up my trades the best. Um, you know, having technicals guide your fundamentals doesn't make much sense uh, because that won't really tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> Um, so yeah, start off with the fundamentals, so let's get right into it. I just like looking at, just looking at like a naked chart when I do this, because, um, you know, I, I don't really need the noise of trend lines or zones or something to sort of, you know, mess up my, my view or sentiment. So basically, <clears throat> last week, we had a huge pump on GJ, uh, Due to the coronavirus fears, and this is this was a huge move. I didn't think we would get a move like that. Like I was expecting a move down to these levels, maybe, but this was just crazy. Um, and then this week, of course, we're just sort of leveling out, figuring out you know what's next, uh, which is expected. You know, you can't you can't have just a market that's constantly just moving crazy. Like there's going to be times where it's choppy, and that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so what I was thinking going into this trade was, it was, um, it was sort of holding, it was bouncing, it was bouncing, it was bouncing, which, um, sort of told me that, and, and the reason I'm, I'm sort of putting this under the fundamental side, because, um, the reason for that is news, obviously, like this whole week news has been coming out about higher numbers, you know. I mean, there's there's a few countries now where numbers are in the three, four, five thousands. Like, um, the United States, honestly, is probably in the thousands. We just don't know it because we can't test people. <laughs> but basically, you know, numbers have just been increasing all week. But this thing has been holding. And um, you know, when something when something doesn't go down on bad news, then um, you know it's pretty bullish and so when you don't get bad news or you get good news it goes up right and that's that's sort of what i was thinking here you know the market was sort of shrugging it off and then once we had a little period of you know whatever of you know no bad news or not so bad news in the market you know just levels out then this thing would, would head up a bit um because it was holding and you know there was bad news coming out and it was still holding so I figured uh, I would take this thing long, not a huge long, you know, my targets wasn't up here. It was, uh, well, I'll get into that, but yeah, I was thinking about taking taking this thing long uh, because, uh, you know, the market seemed to be shorting off fears and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all that went into this trade. Um, nothing really with the pound. Uh, the pound's just sort of there. <laughs> I was mostly trading it based off of the yin and um, its function as a safe haven. Oh my god. Okay, so <clears throat> now we can get into the technicals. Um, I didn't use, FYI, I didn't use any trend lines in this trade, uh, which might be shocking because that, you know, most of my trades <clears throat> involve trend lines, but this only involved zones. So um, basically, two main zones influenced this trade. Um, we had um, this zone here, which if we go back, um, let's actually, let's go on the daily. So <clears throat> normally I, I do a line and a, and a zone, but for the sake of finding a long, long term area, I'm just going to start off with, with a line. And then we can draw a little zone. Um, so as you can see, right here, price rejected. Right here, price rejected. Right here, we can see wicks. Right there, price rejected. Uh, right, right there, price rejected. And then acted as support. Um, so, and if we go further, further back, um, rejected, kind of rejected. And if we go further back, and this is like, you know, almost a decade ago, rejected. Uh, you know, uh, 
projected right there. So, um, yeah, as, as you can tell, this is a very strong level uh, rejected right there. This is a very strong level uh, for price to react, and it was holding this level. And then another level was like, you know, this one, which obviously um, going back, I'm not going to go too far, but uh, you can just see this is a strong area. So um, <clears throat> those are the main, main uh, zones that influenced this trade. I'm not quite sure what just happened there. Oh. I, okay. I changed uh, symbols, I guess. So, <clears throat> going down to the four hour charts here. Like I said, price was uh, rejecting off of this level quite nice. Um, if my Wi Fi wants to cooperate, we can draw a zone here for these levels. But, uh, so yeah, guys, basically this, this zone, and then uh, like this zone here. So so yeah, <clears throat> price was rejecting off of this. I, I uh, was looking at taking this long, just up to this area. You know, I didn't have some crazy TP for 700 pips. Um, doesn't mean I might not have held it if it was going well, maybe, but um, this was my, my, main, my main goal for the trade, so. Let's head down to the one hour, which is the main time frame I took, uh, main time frame I looked at for this trade. Um, so yeah, price rejected here. And uh, I can't remember if I got in here or if I got in here, but I know I got in at this area. So we're just gonna say I got in uh, here. So got in right there. Mm -hmm. And my stop was eh, roughly around like 60, 70 pips, something like that. Just to give myself a little bit of space um, below this low. And then my TP was up here, um, around 180. But you know, if it, if it got up here, I probably would have just taken it off. So let's just move it down to this 160, 160 pips. As you can see, for about a day, almost two days, this thing was just chopping around, um, you know, which was kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, and so this thing was chopping, chopping, and it finally pushed up. And if we're looking here, the reasoning, uh, what's actually, this would have been a nice place uh, to get in, just like a, from a technical standpoint. Um, you can see we had a, a break retest of this trend line, and then we had this little uh, trend line here that was holding. So right here actually would have been a nice place to go long, but you know, it's whatever. Anyways, <clears throat> this thing pushed up, pushed up, and I got like 120 pips roughly, about 120 pips, and then I decided to take some partial profit right here because, well, quite frankly, you know, it's fairly close to my TP, why not take a little bit off, which in turn is taking some risk off because you have a smaller position size, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, basically took some partials. I took like 20, like 20, 30% off, I think. I think it was 20, 20, 30%. And and then this thing was pulled back. And so I was looking at an area to add because I'm trying to improve um, the size of my winners and I'm trying to work on getting better at adding positions because a lot of times I'm just not looking for places to add and so I miss it and I could have added, um, but I was just focused on the trade I was in and not <clears throat> a trade I could have been in also, you know, uh, which would have netted me more pips, more, more money, uh, all that good stuff. So I was looking for an area to add and this would have been a nice contender. Um, but I saw that this area here was a strong level of, of resistance, right? It rejected off of this area multiple times 
and finally broke through and, and pushed up. So <clears throat> right here is where I was thinking about adding another position. And so I set a pending order to add and it got filled when it hit. And I'll show you guys the math behind this trade. Um, basically this trade ended up almost at break even. And you're probably gonna wonder, and it ended up almost at break even. And yet uh, I had almost, um, you know, I had a huge upside gain if this thing would have moved up to here. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into the math behind that in a second. But basically, um, on top of this zone here, I drew a fib from the high that it made to this this last higher low right here. So I drew a fib like that. Um, and so, yeah, basically this sat at the, uh, like in between the 50 and the 38. You know what though, actually, I forgot if I drew it, I might've drawn it from this bottom point here. So it sat, yeah, I think it did because it was just above the 50 here. Um, and then <clears throat> my stop was right where I got in. So it was below the 38.2. It gave me, you know, if this thing was going to move up, it gave me a good amount of room for that to happen. Um, and basically, once I add, so basically how I do this is when I add a position, I move the previous position to break even. So I moved this to break even. And the reason I do that is, <clears throat> and I sort of touched on this in my last video, where if you add positions, you can get asymmetrical risk um, and really maximize your gains. So let's take a look at the math behind this first trade, right? 160 pips was what I would have made. And I was risking 70. So, um, you know, that's a decent risk reward, solid trade, whatever. But um, if we add positions, we can make this a lot more attractive. So um, <clears throat> let's just say we moved it. I basically, I moved it up to this 127. So 170 pips and 125 pips roughly was the targets for these two trades. And by moving the stop to break even on my first, and you know obviously this is only a 45 pip stop so in total i was risking 45 pips at this moment when the trade executed you know right here i was risking 45 pips to make um so scratch that we added a position so all of a sudden now that goes um so once i move the stop to break even now <clears throat> I was potentially going to make 160 pips and I was risking zero, which is obviously a great risk reward. But then by adding a position, hey guys, sorry about that, a little bit of technical difficulties. So with this new position added, um, you know, 120 pips um, potential gain and we're risking 45, that's an awful four. So in total, now with this new position, we can pot we can potentially make two hundred and eighty pips profit, and we are only risking forty five pips. That is an amazing risk reward ratio, and we didn't really have a crazy risk reward ratio, right? It's just a normal like we're still taking you know we still have enough room to let this thing sort of move a little bit, um, but the reason is we added a position so. Um, and the reason we are afforded this, you know, great risk reward and uh, great potential for a little bit of loss is because we had this movement up. We had a little bit of cushion here, uh, basically. Uh, we had a little bit of a win. And so that's why adding positions is a great way to um, you know, get profitable. If you're not profitable, I would say adding positions could possibly change that. Um, because obviously this thing didn't work out. Um, but let's say it did, like this is a great win. We just had 280 pips, you know, double the size of here, right? Cause we added. So, um, 
you know, not only are we making a good gain here, but, you know, we're making, from this point on, this is all double the size of this position, almost, you know, a little bit of partials taken, but um, that can, you know, this now affords me to take, what, two, three, four losses, and now I'm, I'm still at, what, break even, right? So, um, yeah, going back to my win rate video, you can have a 40% win rate, win rate, but if you do this, um, if you have positions and manage risk well, you will be good. <laughs> you don't you don't need to stress about every single trade, um, and if you are, you're risking too much. So enough about that. So basically, this is what I mean when I said adding positions can give you asymmetrical risk. And imagine if it hits this and things have changed, and I want to extend my TP, um, uh, let's say to here. You know, let's say I <clears throat> didn't want to take any off. I want to extend my TP to here. So what's the math on that? 230, roughly. Um, so 230 and 180. Oh my God, 180. So now potential gain is 410 pips. And we're risking how much? Well, at that point, I'd probably move stop to break even. So zero. We're risking zero to make 410 pips. Um, and that would afford me, pff, like, what? how many losses? A lot of losses. And I'd still be at break even from before this trade. So, um, and of course, I might not have those losses. I'll have gains. And that's how you make money trading, <laughs> basically. So a lot of people think, you know, uh, when, when when people say have your winners be way bigger than your losers, that means you need to have a one to six risk reward on every single trade or a one to five risk reward on every single trade. No, like I don't have, like this is a, uh, well, at the old TP, this was only a, uh, you know, not even three and this, this trade here was like less than three. So you don't need crazy risk reward ratios. You just need to add positions and manage risk by taking some partials along the way, and you know moving stops break even when when um, you add positions. Well, at least that's what I do, and it works out well because otherwise, as we see here, um, oh whoops, as we see what happened here, I would have instead of taking a forty-five pip loss. Uh, it would have hit my stop here, and I would have taken a over 100 pip loss. So, um, <clears throat> because of my trade management, and so just to finish off the whole how the trade went, uh, nothing really materially changed. Of course, like I said, numbers were getting higher, and fear started creeping back in, which I, I knew was a possibility from the start of this trade. You know, I wasn't 100% certain that this was the bottom, or else my TP would, would be, you know, up a lot higher. <laughs> So, yeah, long story short, I, uh, yeah, I wasn't trying to pick a bottom. I just, I saw a good opportunity. This thing wasn't breaking. I decided to take a crack at it and, uh, at a position to, you know, make it a good trade. Didn't work out. Fears creeped back in, made a lower low, which is fine. Um, but if you look at it, which doesn't really impact this trade at all, but I just, I just want to point out there's a nice little ch channel here, uh, which might help you guys trade next week. I don't know. Uh, just wanted to <clears throat> note that I found a little channel here. Maybe you guys can use it. But yeah, guys, um, basically that's how the trade ended. It hit break even on this trade and it hit 45 pips stop on this trade. So I lost 45 pips. But because because I was uh, a little bit ta more tactical, I took a little bit of partials. Um, basically now instead of a 45 pip loss, I was... Uh, in terms of like dollar amount, like of course it was still a 45 pip loss, but because I took some partial profits, it turned into like a 20 pip uh, loss or like 15. And what was the potential gain? Maybe, um, you know, 280 pips or 410 pips. And this was my total, you know, loss. So it's nothing crazy here. Nothing you guys can't do. Like you see the math here, you see what I'm talking about. So. This is how you become a profitable trader. Uh, it's not so much about strategy with the high win rate. It's not so much about 
I mean, it's just, you know, like, you, obviously, you got to be on top of things. You got to be a decent trader. You got to understand fundamentals, or at least the way I trade. You got to understand fundamentals good. You got to be good at reading that and, uh, you know, good at reading technicals. Like, you still have to be a good trader. I'm not saying you can be an awful trader make a ton of money, but you don't have to be an exception, exceptional trader to make money. And I think a lot of people are shooting for that. You know, they're like, I'm trying to get my win rate to 70, 80 percent. Dude, you don't need to get your win rate to 70, 80 percent focus on the math focus on this and you'll you'll see what you're looking for you'll see the money uh, and of course this is uncomfortable right like i had a nice win i could have just taken this win and i would have made more money than doing all this and, and ending up with a net loss right but dude like i like look at how much i could potentially make like this is 280 pips as opposed to the what 70 or something 70, 80, 100. Um, if I do that consistently every single trade, that's not going to pay for my losers. And I'm going to be more of a break even trader or maybe a little bit in drawdown. Um, you know, losing money if I did that on every trade. But if you do this on every trade or tried to do this on every trade, um, granted, I don't know if there was really a justification at a position here. Um, you know, given fear was creeping back in and there was a high possibility this thing would move lower. So <laughs> that's a whole nother story The you know, whether I should have added a position or not, uh, I could have just taken a break even uh, loss, but regardless, I just want to show you guys, uh, honestly, I don't really think I did anything wrong. The only thing I'm going to say is maybe I shouldn't have added a position here. Um, but I don't really think that was too, too big a deal since my goal is to try to add more, uh, to my winner winners. So, um, I did good there. So, no complaints really like it's a loss but you gotta understand i followed my plan i followed my rules i executed the trade uh quite nicely and it just didn't work out like i can't, like you can't beat yourself up because you had a loss like you're, you're not god you, you're not you're not moving the market you're not predicting with 100 percent accuracy so you gotta realize you're gonna have losses and you know like i said if you're doing everything right it a loss shouldn't mean much like this I, like doesn't mean a whole lot. I'm not, tr I'm not like tripping too hard that uh, high loss. Like, I, I don't really care too much. Like, yeah, I would have, I would have liked for it to be a winner. Um, you know, obviously it's great to tell you guys that, oh, look at all these pips. But like, in terms of money, in terms of profitability, this loss didn't mean much. And that's how most trades should be. Granted, not every trade will have such a small stop. Um, of uh, 40 pips or 60 pips, you know, since I'm trading on the one hour. If I was trading on the four hour, you know, different setup, it might be 80 pips, it might be 120 pip stop, which obviously means a little bit more. Um, means a little bit more in terms of my P&L, but uh, still it shouldn't, shouldn't uh, affect you guys too much. So hope you enjoyed this recap. Uh, again, it wasn't so much of a trade recap, more of, I guess, a trade management recap. But um, because uh, the reasons I got in, you know, wasn't too complex or anything. Uh, I think it's just more important how I manage the trade. And I hope you guys can implement this into your trading as well. Um, you know, so that you have uh, really nice winners when you win and not so bad losers when you lose. Um last little point i wanted to touch on is the reason the loss doesn't mean much also is position sizing right which i, I didn't really get into here but i wasn't risking more than one percent on this trade i wasn't i wasn't risking more more than one percent here so uh that's another reason it doesn't hurt you know if i was risking five ten percent no matter how i would have managed this trade if i lost it would have it would have hurt <laughs> You know, it would have hurt. I would have been down 5%, 10%. But I'm not. I'm down less than, you know, more than less than 1%. Like 0.2 maybe percent or something like that. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, more content coming soon. Um, yeah, guys, it's Friday. So take some time to enjoy the weekend. Uh, reflect, analyze. Um you know, if I'm if I'm feeling really motivated, I might get a video out to you guys this weekend, another one. <laughs> but you know, we'll we'll see about that. Have a great weekend. Um, 
if you got any value out of this, you know, if you liked it, you know, feel free to leave a like on the video. And if you want to see more content, you are more than welcome to subscribe because I will be uploading, um, you know, somewhat consistently. So have a great weekend, guys.